This is the Extra Point Podcast. During this podcast, we will dive deeper into our Sunday teaching and share practical next steps for your faith journey. Now, let's kick off the Extra Point. Hello and welcome to the Extra Point Podcast. My name is Anna. I'm the youth pastor here at Southridge Church. And we are in our series, the Rise and Fall series, talking through 1 Samuel and um, the life of David, the leadership of King Saul. And uh, we are just wrapping up chapter 21 in 1 Samuel. We had a guest speaker this past week, Brett. He was awesome. And he had so much to share. We hope that you listen to that. You can find that on the same channel on YouTube and check out that sermon series, or that sermon from this past Sunday. Um, for starters, he talked about how we respond to fear. Um, in this passage in 1 Samuel 21, we see David running for his life, truly afraid. And one of the things when we think of fear is that natural instinct to fight or flight. Um, Will is with us, intern here at Southridge, and Will, when we think about fear response, what comes to your mind? So I think about the first time I ever had a panic attack. Mm -hmm. So what happened was I'm sitting there in a ca on my couch playing a video game, and all of a sudden I feel like everything's wrong, and I got to get mm -hmm. out of here. Yeah. So I am home alone. And I jet outside the front door, and I am running down the driveway, thinking I'm having a heart attack. So running is totally what you're supposed to do when you have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's where my mind is. So I get, here with that, I get hit with that flight, and about halfway down the driveway, I'm just going, <sighs> so I, don't, yeah. I, I take a break. And then luckily, I'm starting to get a clear mind. Mm -hmm. But... That's where, you know, I kind of relate and can see where Samuel is sitting there going crazy at the gate, you know, because yeah. I was in a mindset when I was, when fear took over that I was acting crazy, yeah. you know, it, it's, it makes a lot of sense that Samuel did what he did. And that, that, well, David, David, yeah, David, yeah, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay, yeah, David, uh, it, and, um, I just relate with it a lot because yeah. I get hit with fear very often, and I'm not myself when that happens. Yeah. And we can see that David was not himself. Right. You know, whether it was kind of a premeditated pre action or not, yeah. or just kind of that fight or flight response that drove David to have drool coming down his beard and acting like a rabid dog. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is... I tend to be a person in a fear response. I tend to freeze, freeze up. Sometimes that means I freeze up in my words. Like I don't know what to say next or physically freeze up. Um, and there's been times where I've tried to fight or run. But um, my initial natural response to just a generic sense of fear is to just like lock up. And um, I don't know that that's necessarily the best situation because uh, then you can't take the next step action yeah. to deal with whatever is you know causing some fear in our lives and I do agree you know we see David act out of character um, we heard this in Sunday sermon you know David was called a man after God's own heart um, he is a young man raised in the ways of God within the safety of God's people and really following God and now he's in this place where he's just consumed by fear and he's acting totally out of character. Yeah. Um, you know, drooling, scratching at the gate posts, and to the point where um, the Philistines and their king and all the people around are going, this man is crazy. This can't be the same guy. And if it is, he's a madman. Um, so let's just briefly discuss, you know, maybe none of us have done that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but maybe <laughs> we have never gotten to the point where we're drooling and clawing at walls, but there probably has been a point where we have acted out of character, especially if we are um, Jesus followers, children of God, where we've acted out of our um, character of God's kid. What can that look like? Maybe it doesn't look like drooling and scratching, but it does look like something. Like, what are some things that you think of? 
the thing that comes immediately to my mind is, you know, the white lie. Mm. That is something that I'd say all of us have done at one yeah. point or the n- another. And it seems harmless, but it is lying. Yeah. And we do it out of fear of consequence or fear of how somebody will react or look at us different. So, you know, maybe you grab somebody's lunch out of the fridge and you don't want them to know. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So you're, you, you lie about it and you know, it's, it's not really a victimless crime because that person's going hungry that day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But it's, it's not the end of the world, but it is something that you kind of, you're trying to manage the situation to manage your fear in such a way that doesn't reflect the image of God. Yeah. And as Christians, that's what we want to do. We want to be image bearers, true image bearers that we yeah. are, you know, and lying doesn't fit into that. Or maybe we go along with doing something that we know isn't quite right. Like, I get, you know, I kind of think of kids and kind of joining in on bullying. Oh, right. You yeah. know, like you normally wouldn't do that. Probably you're probably not the person to do that, but you got a group of people around you doing mm-hmm. it to somebody and you want to fit in. Yeah. So you go against your normal way of acting yeah. and bully somebody or make fun of somebody and do something that isn't isn't Christ like. Yeah. And maybe in an effort of self preservation. Yeah. Or like yeah. to save yourself from the fear of maybe being the next victim. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. would act out of character. Yeah, I agree. I, I think of times in my life when I was listening to this message, um, I instantly became convicted of the times where I was afraid of social pressures like that, social pressures to fit in or social pressures to be, um, you know, the kind of person who likes this kind of brand or is into this kind of hobby or like is against that type of political party really or whatever. Th- yes. Okay. <laughs> These different things that people are into and I'm going, well, in an act of self-preservation, because I'm afraid of rejection or I'm afraid of um, the social outcome, maybe I will act out of character. Yeah. This isn't like me, but if this will help me get to the next phase, um, and sometimes to a fault where we do not just act out of character, but we act in sin, mm-hmm. and that is where it really becomes a trouble, Yes, um, a troubled situation, because I know that it's... There is a place where we can, you know, be like someone in a sense to reach them. But when we're being like someone to preserve our own skin, then we're not really trusting that God has got us. And that we're like truly founded in his peace and in his goodness um, as his kid. And we give up some of that in in a tough spot. And it can leave us with some regrets. And I imagine that that gate post that David was scratching on had some regrets of his actions that day. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think that um, in that same light, there are probably some of us listening or who were a part of that sermon where we can look at parts of our life where, man, we just really were acting stupid or acting mm-hmm. out of character because we were afraid of what would happen if we were just being ourselves, like just being who God has called us to be in that moment. Um, the other, this was really a sidebar that Brett introed, but I think that it's a sidebar worth exploring. Um, in this part of Daniel's, or sorry, Daniel, David's journey, David is running for his life. And instead of running to God's people, his people for security and safety, he runs to the neighboring community, which is enemies of God's people. Yeah for safety and it really had me thinking as Brett was sharing like there are times where God's people have not been the most welcoming to people who are afraid or to people who are consumed by things that aren't of God yeah. and it can seem more comfortable to leave and so in that context we're thinking you know what would that look like for the church I know here on Southridge we say we want to be a church our community can't live without, 
But what happens when the community is afraid? Or what happens when the community is hurt? Are we still wanting to be the kinds of people who welcome that in and allow that to be safe there the way that David was looking for safety? And so just kind of want to like bring that question to the table for some discussion. Like, what do you think it takes as we've been met by the peace of Jesus? Yeah. How do we offer that to others? What does that look like? So I think, you know, it, it's difficult to do because you you have to be Christ-like. You have to work towards being like Jesus to truly welcome everybody in, to show the compassion that Jesus did. Jesus did. And because of our sinful nature, that isn't always going to be the case. Yeah. So we work really hard at being comfortable in Jesus and knowing that Jesus has us. And that looks like a lot of transformation for a lot of people mm-hmm. and being open about that transformation and being um, clear that, Hey, I'm not perfect, but we're going to sit here and we're going to welcome you in. We're going to help you. We're going to do whatever yeah. we can to love you. And that is really the condition of your heart is where that really starts to change that love mm-hmm. God's love pouring out of you into others. That's the mm. real, that's the secret sauce. That's, yeah. Dude, that's good. Yeah. And, I agree. And it's like, it's difficult for some people because, you know, um, life circumstances, they don't, they might not know what love was really like. Yeah. They do, but when we come into contact with God's true, unabashed love, yeah. it, changes us the holy spirit changes us and we need to let the holy spirit change us not be scared of the holy spirit changing us Mm -hmm. we need to let that happen and let others see it and be open to them knowing what is going on in our life not putting on that church mask Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that a lot of people do because a lot of people think that we'll be scared away from a church because they think it's a bunch of hypocrites right when in reality, this this is like a hospital. We're all hurting, and we yeah. are all we all have our faults because of our sinful nature. Yeah, and we need to be transparent about that. I think that when we meet somebody on the level of, "Hey, I'm me. I'm human," that opens up a doorway for them to be like, "Oh, I can relate to that. You're not yeah. this holier than thou." person you are somebody that's learned God's love and is here to offer some help yeah no that's good that's so good because I think that um it is you're spot on with that that secret of being able to love people who are afraid and make them feel safe is knowing that you when you're afraid are safe yeah in God yep like and really knowing that not just like thinking it or like saying, well, I guess this is how it is. But like choosing to believe that it's true and experiencing that when we get to that point where we're like, man, I'm scared. Like I need God in this. I need God in this job application. I need jo- God in this as I raise my kids. I need God in this um, friendship that's falling apart. God in this relationship that's like being crushed. Like God, I need God in the way that I take care of myself or the way that I see myself or the way that I manage myself. Like I need God in all of these ways that I feel afraid. You can really start to pour that out onto others yeah. and give them a safe place to um, alleviate their fears and burdens as well. Yeah. Um, I think that that's so cool. I know um, one of the big takeaways that I'd like to encourage and challenge um, others and listeners um, is I didn't know this, that there were at least – 365 mentions in scripture yeah, that's wild, right? of not being afraid or don't fear. Like, don't be afraid, don't fear. It's enough for every day of the year. And so I think it's a great challenge this year as we experience moments of fear, tr- look up another scripture that reminds us not to be afraid. Yeah. And just be reminded of those truths that God is with us. Um, and if we are in Christ, then we are in a safe space when we experience fear and that we can trust that Jesus is the ultimate peace, which is 
the exact counteract. It is the kryptonite of fear. Yeah. Peace. That's pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Anything else you want to add from Sunday's sermon? Not from Sunday's sermon, but uh, leading towards Jesus being our peace. So yeah. I've always been a superstitious guy. Okay. <laughs> One of those superstitions is that I have to leave through the door that I entered. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard about that. Heard that before? Nope. <laughs> yeah, so it's weird, right? Gotcha. And one of my actions I've taken to build my faith in Jesus is if I come into a building through a door, yeah. I make sure I leave through a different door. No way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh, that's Cause, amazing. Because Jesus has me. Yes. You know? yeah. i got to get rid of that fear yep. that you know yeah. something weird is going to happen if I don't go through a oh, door that I that. left. You Dude, know? that's – listen – that is next steps in the works. I know yeah. we talk about next steps here a lot. Our our mission at Southridge is to help people take their next steps in their faith journey. But next steps don't always look like a leap of faith. Sometimes it's something really simple. Yep. Like making a deal with yourself. Hey, I if I'm going to trust that God's got me, this is the step I'm going to take. That's cool, Will. Good yep. for you, dude. Yep. Very cool. Well, Friends who are listening, make sure you go back and listen to Sunday Sermon if you did not yet. Um, catch up on the Rise and Fall series. This is a series that has really challenged us to consider who God is, um, consider who we are in Him, and what challenges we can learn from the stories of these kings and, and of these people and how we can face challenges today because of God's realness in our life through Jesus and that ultimate peace that we have to face fear and to face all of life's challenges. We're glad to have been with you today. We love you, and we can't wait to see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Extra Point. Be sure to subscribe to the Southridge Church Podcast and tune in every Wednesday for another episode of The Extra Point.